Hey, my name is Aaliyah Renee. I'm 22 years old, finishing up my first year of grad school. I'm currently getting a master's in biological sciences with a concentration in neuroscience. And in the fall, I'm planning on switching to the PhD program. I've come a really long way in my whole educational experience from graduating undergrad with practically no experience and feeling extremely lost, but knowing that I wanted to do something more to being accepted to four different graduate programs, being offered scholarships and TA ships and jobs, the whole experience experience of me even getting here has been a 180. And honestly, I can say that I accomplished going from being really clueless about what I was going to do with life and feeling like I really couldn't apply anywhere based on my credentials to being able to conquer the grad school application process. And honestly, this didn't happen because I had a wicked stroke of luck or something amazing happened in my life or I had the right connections because I genuinely didn't know anyone in this space. But I can truly say it was because I implemented four really intentional strategies as well as kept some core principles and mindsets throughout this whole process. And I think that is what got me from a place of feeling hopeless with no prospects and feeling like I graduated with nothing that would help me to get into grad school to then leverage the things that I sometimes overlooked or forgot or didn't even realize that I learned throughout my experience to help me get into grad school. Now I've been documenting my whole experience through this YouTube channel since the beginning. Sometimes I'll go back and watch the videos and I remember going back to January 2022 if you would have asked me if I knew where I was going or applying or what I would be doing at this very moment I would have been dumbfounded. I was just wrapping up my degree in the sciences. I was getting an honors in biomedical science and I wasn't quite done with education. And I had initially gone into this biomed degree because I thought I was gonna be a doctor. My name is Ali Goldson and I am in the 10th grade. I'm not even 16, I'm 15 and I was assessing over like medical school. And while I was going through my undergrad experience, as undergrad does, you sort of open your eyes to things beyond just being a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse. And you find out that there's a bunch of these other careers, but it does entail more education. I also began to expose myself to the idea of behavior and psychology, and most importantly, the brain. And I sort of dove into, I think over 20 credits of neuroscience and neurobiology in my last year of undergrad. And I began to really start to fall in love with the science of the brain. And I knew that I wanted to study it more after I got my degree. So in the tail end of the third year and going into fourth year, I started to pivot and look at at what it meant to be a researcher, what it meant to go to grad school. I started looking at different programs and different schools. And you're probably watching this video because you're doing the same thing in the process of applying, which is really, really great. You wanna get knowledge. And as you continue to look at the requirements of the schools that you wanna go to, you may notice that they have some sort of research experience expectation, or at least someone who has knowledge, experience, or understanding of research which was something that I did not have. And I was really distraught because I thought that right out of the gate, because of this, I was already gonna be behind all of the other applicants who had this experience. And the reason why I didn't have research experience wasn't because I didn't try. Throughout my second and third year, so 2018 to around 2020, I was reaching out to professors that I had taken classes with and done well, sent a bunch of cold emails, got a lot of nothings, and I actually did end up reaching out to one professor. I had an interview process, everything was looking great, and he was about to let me into the lab when COVID hit. Hi Aaliyah, connecting with you about the research interview was on my to-do list so your message is timely. The research labs have been shut down. So yeah, that was around 2020 and unfortunately the spot that I thought I secured was gone. For the next two years, everything was closed there was no lab opportunity so i was really just hunkering down trying to get a high gpa and i kind of put my grad school search and journey on the back burner but at the same time as i was going through the summer of third year about to enter fourth year sort of devastated by the fact that i wouldn't be able to do any hands-on research i did realize that if i wanted to know more about neuroscience i had to get involved somehow thankfully just by participating in a club at my school i was able to join a seminar with a professor from my school that did research looking at how dance, music therapy, and movement therapy actually combated the effects of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's. And I thought it was super cool and super neuro-based. So after the presentation, I sent him an email and he said I could join the lab, but they weren't doing anything because of COVID. Everything had moved online. But he did say that there were these weekly Zoom meetings that sort of happened every week where there would be postdocs, PhDs, masters that were part of his lab that would just come together and talk for like an hour 
on a Wednesday. And bet your bottom dollar, even though there was no research, I was a part of the lab. So I was there in those meetings, not even talking, but just taking notes about what others were doing, thinking about ways that I could support them, helping proofread and edit articles that were being submitted. And I started to understand the idea of grad school. And even though I wasn't in a wet lab or doing work and all of the research was paused in that lab, I still feel like that experience helped me take things away. And then came the issue of time, because when I finally felt confident enough about my decision and going into grad school and felt like okay I might not have research experience but I know that I want to do this and I'm gonna try a lot of the schools that I wanted to apply to their application processes were already closed by October November December of 2021 the year before but still at that point against all odds I just started to frame myself in the mindset of saying I'm going to go to grad school so let me start acting like I actually want to start applying to these places which in and of itself was like the scariest part of this process. I started by making a notion template that I worked on and looked like this. And if you take a look at it, I've broken it up based on application status, the want level. So how much I wanted to go to the school, the name of the school, the program, the tuition cost, which was really important for me as an international student, the location of the school, the link to the sort of admissions website and how to apply things like the requirements, the application due date, the course start date, the duration. And then I also had the number of letters of recommendation they needed and if they required a personal statement and GRE. And even in those moments of feeling hopeless, I understood that failure was not an option for me, not just for myself, but my parents were definitely like, you need to do something, okay? Figure it out. And maybe you're like this too, wanting to go to grad school, wanting to have a higher education, and you feel like you're in a pinch because of circumstances that might have been because of your own complacency or genuinely because you couldn't get any research experience. But despite my circumstances at the time, which might look like your circumstances right now, I got into grad school. I got into multiple different grad schools in multiple different countries, and I got into a great program that is going to allow me to transition from a master's to a PhD without research experience. Okay, so now that you've heard my story for a little bit, let's get into the nitty gritty about the four intentional strategies and techniques that I think you should implement to hopefully get you to this point as well. We'll start with tip zero, which is obviously doing research. You're going to want to do what I did, similar to the Notion template that I made, where you're scouring the internet for a bunch of different schools with programs that you think are things that you would want to commit to for two to six years to do research with. So if you know that you like neuroscience like me, start looking at schools that offer programs programs in neuroscience. And sometimes it's not just looking up PhD or master's in neuroscience. Like me, for example, I'm getting a degree in biological sciences with a concentration in neuroscience. So when I came across this program, I was about to write it off because it was biological sciences and I wanted to do neuroscience. But if you start going through the program and understanding that different faculty members within that program or department offer different types of research, you can probably find something that's in the stream that you're interested in, but might not be under the conventional name of neuroscience or cancer biology or animal physiology. Now to actually start off this process, the first technique that you're going to want to do is make something that I call a BORT document, also known as a general statement of purpose. If you're familiar with the grad school application process, almost every school, if not all schools, are going to ask you to submit a written statement of purpose. And this is basically going to tell them a little bit about you, a little bit about the experience you have and a little bit about why you want to pursue the certain stream of research at this specific school. And the key here is not to be super specific. You don't want to start having to think through how to narrow down the statement of purpose for a specific schools that you're applying to. Start off really, really broad and start blurting out things about yourself, about your experience and about why you want to pursue this general field of research. So for example, what are your degrees or the programs you've graduated from? Are you an author on any articles? Have you done any any research? Do you have specific projects that you're working on, even if a paper didn't come from it? Do you participate in some sort of relevant or adjacent volunteering or clubs? What about job experience? All of these, even if you think these won't specifically help you in the application process, should be written down on this really large blurt 
statement of purpose. Okay, so you're starting to create this really big general statement of purpose and maybe you're starting to realize, oh, hey, I did this. Oh yeah, I did that. Like, that's pretty cool. Now for step two, you're going to go through each of the things you've done in that what you've done category and then add specific things that you've learned, whether that be character traits, strategies, in each one of those specific experiences. And this is because if you don't have papers and publications, you have to make yourself stand out as an applicant and make up for those losses in another way. And here's the bigger picture about things like papers and publications. A paper does not just say, oh, hey, this person did research. For a lot of admissions officers, they show a couple key traits that are really important when they're looking for new scientists in their program. For example, persistence, motivation, organization, creativity, collaboration, time management, and of course, an interest in science, hopefully paralleling the field that you're applying to. And as you can see, these character traits cannot just be gained when you're writing a paper. They can be gained through many different experiences. So for example, I volunteered for a medical relief club. I started off as just being like their social media rep. Then in third year, I was their vice president. And then I served as their president in my fourth year of university. And a part of what we did in order to raise money for the club was that we put on these annual case competitions. And I was on the board of directors for the case competition that we held all throughout the province that I lived in. The goal of it was that we would sit down and think about creating some sort of scientific and medically challenging case. And then we would judge those cases based on a variety of parameters and announce a winner. I realized that I gained some really good skills. I've showed creativity, a care for the science, collaboration, organization, communication. All of these things are super important for a scientist. So I'm realizing now I actually have things that I can present in the paper and actually pivot them and frame them in a way to show that I've developed these skills that not only helped me for things that I thought were unrelated, but that can directly help me as a future scientist, which makes me stand out as an applicant. Okay, number three, if you feel like you have no research experience and absolutely nothing to bring to the table, you need to start looking at your transcripts. Okay, so I feel like this is really slept on, but if you're in STEM, you're graduating with a STEM degree and you wanna to apply to grad school doing STEM things, please stop worrying. Do this step before you start freaking out about not being equipped in order to get this graduate degree or you have nothing to put on your application. The main thing you're going to do in this step is to go through your transcript, go through each and every course and open up the syllabi for those courses. And you're just gonna start reading them. You're really gonna wanna hone in on the course description, but specifically the learning outcomes. These are literally statements that say what you learned if you've successfully passed this course. So if you've passed the course and you've done well, you've gotten a good mark, you can use these learning outcomes as skills you have gained and leverage them in any application that you use, whether that be for grad school, med school, wherever. Let's use this syllabi that I found as an example. So for the sake of this example, we are using a second year chem lab. So let's say I'm a prospective student looking to complete my master's in chemistry, but I never really got a chance to work in a lab with a prof, publish any papers, nothing like that. But I did take this general chemistry course in my second year and it had a lab requirement and I was forced to go there for three hours every week just to pass the course. So you're gonna grab your syllabus from the school website and make a beeline straight to the learning outcomes and course descriptions. Look how nice this syllabus specifically puts the summarized skills that you've learned in parentheses. In the first point, you're learning about chemical concepts. The second talks about lab reports, so the idea of scientific communication. It looks like the third point here has to do with like data analysis. And here's another syllabus for anatomy and another really stacked one that's for biology. If I could like patent this as a Leah Renee transcript reflection strategy, like I would do it. But honestly, when I did this it granted me so much hope it was insane and it made me have like a certain sense of gratitude for my whole undergraduate experience in the sense where it was like everything I did was so intentional and everything I did was for a reason like you were going to those three hour labs so don't forget about those use them in your application because those lab experiences made you into a researcher they made you into a scientist you were working in a lab you were doing lab protocols you were writing lab reports which is scientific literature you were creating graphs and generating stats these are all things that your undergraduate degree did. So just because you don't have a paper doesn't mean that you don't have what it takes to be a scientist. You know you have what it takes to be a scientist. That's why you want to go to grad school. You just need to take a step back and start to find tangible ways to show that if you can't do that through the means of saying, oh, I have a paper or I did this publication or this project. The last thing, the fourth thing you need to do, and one that I'm really contemplating on making a dedicated video to 
is having good references. First, do not procrastinate your references. As soon as you know you wanna to go to grad school, start reaching out to references because profs are busy and they take a really long time to do anything. And it's not because they don't care, it's just because they have so many other things going on that sometimes they forget, which is why if you message them like even a year before you're applying, it gives you time to say to them, hey, I'm planning on applying on August 7th, 2024. Are you available to be my reference? Also, if you're concerned about them not knowing you very well, or like the quality of their reference just because you don't have that like experience with them if you reach out to them sooner it will allow you to also initiate having like a little conversation with them and that's all i'll say for now so let me know down below if you want to see a references video especially from someone who was also feeling hopeless in terms of references as well and those were my four tips okay so if i could wrap up this video into genuine principles whether you're applying to grad school med school applying for a job whatever it may be and whatever stage of life that you're in the first was to have gratitude for literally everything that i've done i think when i finished my undergrad i was like oh my gosh i just have this piece of paper i have nothing to show for it i have nothing no papers i have no publications i can't apply to anything but when i started looking back at it with gratitude it allowed me to see everything that i did in order to get the degree which then allowed me to start thinking let me look at my transcript let me look at the syllabi and then figuring out like I had all these skills in me because I've completed these things. And it made me realize that if you have a pessimistic attitude and lens towards how far you've come, and if you feel like you haven't done enough up until this point in your life, you will never be able to look back and see the experiences that you've had and thus you won't be able to see what those experiences have taught you and how those skills can then be leveraged on things like an application. I think another simple one is the idea that if you really want something, you'll stop at nothing to achieve that goal. You'll keep pushing, you'll be resourceful, you'll be persistent to make sure that you can use those things to the best of your ability to obtain a goal. And I think that's what I did and that's what sort of inspired this video. And also something that I feel like I was really privileged with and I understand that it's a privilege of mine because there are some people who don't have this but just a good support system my family who loves me my faith in god and jesus i feel like has really strengthened me as a person and given me the sort of stamina to run this race that was set before me the race of applying to grad school all of these things sort of helped push me to strive for more and never stop and they also built a confidence within me to let me know like you have all the skills within you you just need to be able to articulate what those skills are and then link those skills to experiences that you've gone through and even if you don't have a support system the takeaway there is just confidence finding a way to build your self-confidence to know that you are an applicant that brings something unique to the table and to believe in yourself and that's really my video I hope that you're able to take something away from it i hope that you're leaving this very encouraged and you learned a little bit about my experience with no experience getting into grad school if you're interested in learning more about me grad school tips or just keeping up with my life in general in grad school please make sure to subscribe to the channel like this video if it helps you and honestly if you want to do something you can do it so believe in yourself i believe in you and i wish you the best of luck i'm praying for you all and i'm expecting to hear great things in the comment sections of your application success stories bye